Hello and welcome to another video here at Stanley Gibbons. I'm Oski Young, one of the specialists here, and today I thought we'd talk about possibly the world's most famous stamp. In fact, it's actually the world's first stamp, and that is, of course, the humble Penny Black. Few collections are ever complete without a Penny Black. And is indeed, it's a stamp that most people identify with, is one that we certainly get the most inquiries about. But despite being the world's most famous stamp in a way, and the world's first stamp, it's not actually rare. 68 million penny blacks were printed between 1840 and 1841, and its survival rate is estimated at two to three million. So it's not necessarily a very rare stamp, but what is rare about a penny black is finding it in good condition. Condition is a term that we encounter every day in our career, and it's a, a term which collectors will as well, but not necessarily everyone understands what condition means. So in this video, I thought I'd describe to you how we would go about valuing a penny black based on its condition, its appearance, and many other factors, and then show you visually how that translates into value. So first of all, there are four primary factors we take into consideration when valuing penny blacks, and not just penny blacks, but all stamps indeed, but just for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna focus on penny blacks. First of all, is it mint or is it used? So used, it's of course self-explanatory, mint is referring to, is it unused? And there's a great difference in value between a mint penny black and a used penny black, usually by hundreds, if not thousands of pounds. And of course, mint examples are quite rightly much scarcer and more valuable as there are less mint examples of penny blacks in the world than there are used, as used had a higher survival rate than mint. Now, the most crucial element is the condition of the penny black. So first of all, the main visual feature of the penny black is the margins. As these stamps were cut out by hand using scissors, they come sometimes don't necessarily come with lovely four even margins and examples with four even margins are worth a premium. And just to show you, we have some facsimile penny blacks here. So don't worry, no real penny blacks are being harmed. And I'm gonna try and cut some of them out just to show you how difficult it is to get it nice and even. And even, you know, with just six here, I am struggling to try and get it nice and evenly. See, uh, you know, I've already cut into this top stamp. So I've already sacrificed the value of that one stamp there for the benefit of this one. So we'll carry on and see if I can get any better. I can see why you didn't want to be a postal clerk. And again, I've already just cut into that one again. So as you can see, it's not easy to get four margins. So examples with only two or three margins or four very small margins are not worth as much as say an example which has four beautiful margins. Another aspect of condition is the physical state of the stamp. Are there any creases? Are there tears that have been left or repaired? Are there thins where the stamp has been stuck down and then forcibly removed, thus taking a portion of the back of the stamp with it? And with mint examples, another dimension is added as you have to take into consideration the gum. The gum was the glutinous wash that was applied to the backs of the stamps so that uh, by the use of some moisture or a brush, as it was uh, the etiquette of affixing a stamp to a letter, as it was then, to be used to affix it to the envelope. And of course, a mint example, the gum is gold dust. If anything happens to that gum, whether it be part of it is removed, part of it's lost, again, you're dramatically affecting the value. So if it was heavily hinged at some point in its life, or it was kept in a warm climate and the gums discolored or perhaps even soaked off by moisture. Again, that is going to dramatically affect the value of the stamp. The third point, which is probably the most technical, is plating penny blacks. Now, penny blacks were printed using a line engraved or intaglio method of printing. So you had an etched design on copper plates and then it was printed thusly onto paper in a press. Now, there were 11 plates that were used so you have plate 1A and 1B being the same plate but different states all the way up to plate 11. Now from those 11 plates, four and six are the most common and number 11 being the scarcest plate. Most examples of plate 11 have a uh, 
characteristic grayish shade to the color. And only 700 sheets were printed from plate 11 of the penny black, and again, have a very low survival rate. Whereas, say, plates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 have a much higher rate, as these were the plates, particularly 4 to 6, which were used the most. So again, sometimes the plate also affects the value of the penny blacks. And to be able to plate a penny black, you need to uh, buy a plating guide. And then again, that's a difficult challenge sometimes as well. And lastly, when we're formulating a value for a penny black, we look at its physical attributes and its appearance. Stamp collecting is a visual hobby after all, and if a stamp doesn't look beautiful, it's going to affect people's potential wanting to spend money on such an item. So beautiful penny black centrally struck with a nice Maltese cross, red or black, or perhaps even a beautiful mint example with a lovely intense color, is going to be worth a lot more than say, a scruffy looking penny black or a washed penny black. So now that we've got the theory out in the way, let's take the practical test and have a look at some. So first of all, let's just look at used examples. And we have six here, which illustrate my point about conditions. So first of all, we have what would be described as very poor. This is not a very nice penny black. It's had a hard life in its 180 years on the planet. It's only really one margin. It has a slight bit of the margin on this side, as you can see. It's been quite heavily struck. You can't see much of the design, but the Maltese cross cancel is there. The color's a little faded as well, and it's just not had a very good life. So in terms of value, how much is that one worth? That one is probably only worth maybe in the region of 20, 30 pounds. Again, that's quite low, considering that it is the world's first stamp. Then we move to these two. Now these look a bit better, but looks can be deceiving. Both of these stamps have actually got faults. This one here has a hole in it, which has been attempted to have been repaired. And you can actually, maybe if you can see just above the one, there is a tear and by the queen's neck and bust, there is a bit of a hole. But again, the cancel isn't very nice, but it does have another margin, one more than this example. Then we look to this one again, this looks better. It has three margins. It's only just touching where the E is in the, uh, in the alphabet uh, tablet. Again, looks can be deceiving. It's got a lot of fins, it's been damaged, it's been stuck down and ripped off a page violently. But it does have a fairly nice Maltese cross. So now we can see what poor to mid-range penny blacks look like. So you have a scale of say 20 pounds to perhaps 40 or 50 or maybe even 60 pounds if you're lucky for these two. So let's look at these slightly nicer ones. So this one here, so this is four and six, the most common plates, but you can immediately see the difference. This has four fairly good margins, very clear, very crisp Maltese cross cancel. It looks very lovely. This example is probably worth about 200 pounds. This example here, which has slightly bigger margins, is again going to be worth about 200 pounds. So immediately it's worth 10 times, it's worth more than this one up here, which is the, the poor example, and worth more than these two examples here. Now what about this one? This one is the one we referred to earlier, the plate 11. So this is the plate 11 penny black in sort of characteristic grayish shade. And this eclipses all the stamps put together. This is worth about 2000 pounds in the condition it's in. This is a very nice example of plate 11. And they don't usually come better than that. So we've looked at used penny blacks. What does a mid-range mint penny black look like? This is one. This hasn't got the best margins. It's very tight. As you can see, perhaps my postal clerk self in the back days of the Victorian era, I didn't cut a, my stamp out very well. I didn't do a very good job, as you can see, and it's very tight, but it is still mint. So this one being a mint penny black, is maybe not as nice as the plate 11, but it is still worth about 1500 pounds because it's mint, but the margins aren't brilliant. So we've seen what a middling sort looks, what looks like. So what does near perfection look like for a mint penny black? And what is the price tag? So we come back to this one. Now this is a mint penny black. This is plate four and it is a very lovely example. It is a wonderful, intense black color. It's got 
on the whole, very good margin, quite large at the top and at foot, a little cut into at the uh, northeast star here, but again, it's still full margins and it's still very exquisite looking. It's got beautiful garm as well, it's very nice. So how much is this one worth? This one, again, eclipses all the ones we've just looked at. This is 13 and a half thousand pounds. So you can see the enormous jump, the story we have been on from one that is worth 20 pounds all the way to 13 and a half thousand pounds. And it shows you quite clearly this story, this transition from poor quality to near perfection. So I hope this has given you a good idea on how we value stamps, how we perceive stamps, and how condition is the governing factor in philately, whether you're buying or selling. Should you buy inferior quality stamps, you will never make a return on it as much as you would say buying a good quality stamp. And as famous philatelists have always said, quality remains long after the price is forgotten. And as always, please like and subscribe for more Stanley Gibbons content. Thank you.